In a previous video, we checked out the Astro City Mini. With the Mini V just over the horizon, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to check out all 22 games. Trash or treasure? Action Fighter is a top-down racer slash shooter. Every now and then we get to change vehicles, and for being released in 1986, this is extremely action-packed. We're gonna stick Sega's Action Fighter here. Aero Fighters is a top-down shmup, first in the series, which eventually ended up on the Neo Geo. While it doesn't add anything new to the classic shooters, it does a great job in refining it. Aero Fighters is pretty awesome. Arm Police Butt Rider is a shoot 'em up released in 1998. Players get to ride jet bikes across very detailed stages in its bullet hell shooter. A lot of the time, the bullets blend into the background, so Butt Rider will be placed into the good tier. Batsagun, released in 1993, is seen as a godfather of bullet hell shooters. Even though it looks quite hectic, it can be quite forgiving, a good starter point for those new to the genre. This game is pretty awesome. Battle Parade, released in 99 by Raising, is another vertical scrolling shmup. Bullet hell shooters can be quite challenging, but this one has difficulty selection, so it's good for beginners too. This is an incredibly fun game to play, and the music in the background really keeps you pumped while you're dodging them bullets. Battle Book Raid is awesome. Cosmic Police Galavan is a platformer. You can punch, kick, and jump about. This game is pretty much like Power Rangers, I guess. It's not bad, but you're not going to spend a long time on this. Boop. Desert Breaker is an overtop shooter game, which has a lot in common with the game Shock Troopers for the Neo Geo. You have a dash button to dodge shots, a variety of weapon pickups, as well as bosses. Pretty neat. Desert Breaker is a pretty good game. Dog Yoon, released in 1992, looks pretty good for its age. But graphics aside, the gameplay falls flat when you have multiple kamikaze ships headed your way. The game feels kind of cheap, because when you die, you need to start again from the checkpoint. Dog Yoon, with its annoying music, is a poor game. Fireshark is another vertical scrolling shooter, very similar to 1942. Having fairly simple gameplay, this title does nothing really to offend, and rather refines the formula. This is a fairly decent game. Let's boop it in here. Grindstormer from 1993 was headed by Don Pachi producer Kenichi Takano, and is also the debut of Cave co-founder Tsuneki Ikeda. Released in 93, this game has tight controls, multiple weapon power-ups, and forms the building blocks of incredible games to come. The music is pretty annoying, and with a bit more development, this could have been excellent. Grindstormer mm, fits around here. Gunbird, released in 94, is another vertically scrolling shoot em up. With its steampunk style setting, the artwork in this game is exceptional. Being part of the bullet hell genre, the player will be mostly dodging shots from the enemies. While the sequel, Gunbird 2, improves on this formula in many ways, the original Gunbird is truly an excellent game. Let's boop it here. Next up, Mooncrester. Having great memories of this game, back on the Amstrad CPC 464, this ruined it all. The visuals and sound are, are fine. The thing that really sucks about this game, and it might be due to the time it was released, is that the aliens just randomly come at you. Screw this game. In the trash. Outzone. This top-down run-and-gun arcade game was released in 1990. Similar to something like Commando, set in the future. We have some weapon power-ups, and it mixes in elements of top-down vertical scrolling shooters. Team this up with its decent graphics and soundtrack, and you've got a pretty good game. Outzone belongs around here. Raiden, released in 1990, is yet another vertical scrolling shooter map. This is the first in the series of Raiden games that has tight controls, nice graphics and music, and has fairly decent gameplay. Raiden is a good game. In you go. Samurai Aces, also known as Sengoku Ace, is another vertical scrolling shooter released in 1993. Designed by Shin Nakamura, the creator of Aero Fighters, this game can be seen as a samurai version of Gunbird, albeit a little less polished. Definitely worth trying out. Saucer Striker, released in 1993, 
is another fantasy-inspired vertical scrolling shooter. This game was released one year before Gunbird, yet it shares many similarities, such as the decent music, as well as the beautiful artwork. Saucer Striker is going to go around here. Released in 1995 by Taikyo, Strikers 1945 is a military-themed vertical shmup. It takes many things from games like 1943 and pushes it to the next level. With the tight controls and being absolutely stunned by the visuals, Strikers 1945 is one awesome game. Terra Cresta was released in 1985 by Nichibutsu. This is the sequel to Moon Cresta, and instead of just changing weapons, you have a modular ship. While it is a distinct improvement on its predecessor, the combination of checkpoints, a slow-moving ship, and kamikaze enemies make for a pretty poor game. In you go. Truxton. But simply, this game is not very fun. I'd rather put a campfire out with my face than play Truxton. Straight in the trash. In you go. Next up, Truxton 2. Released in 1992, four years after the original, it's not surprising that many things have been improved. Graphics, sound, and gameplay too. But to see, after four years of development, we only get a minor update, while keeping many out-of-date mechanics in place, like the checkpoint system, it makes Truxton 2 a little better than trash. It fits around about here. Wrestle War, released in 1989 for the System 16, is a wrestling game. Punch, kick, and grapple your opponent until they have low health, and then go in for the pin. This looks like real wrestling to me, but it's a game I would never miss. Wrestle War is a wrestle bore. There you go. And last up, Zaxxon. This isometric shooting game was released in 1981. Dive into a fortress, shoot enemies, and fuel up by shooting oil canisters. This might have looked great back in 81, but 40 years later, this game really does not hold up. But still, it's better than Truxton. All in all, it looks like the Sega Astro City Mini V is going to be aimed at shoot 'em up fans. Do you agree with our tier list? Comment down below. As we jive out to Battle Back Raid, we just want to say thank you to all of those on our Patreon. We appreciate all of the support you've given us and hope that we can still give back to the community as much as we can. This month, we'll have a new version of Pandora to look forward to, as well as a few more reviews and guides by John Luke. Hello. I am John Luke. Why don't you let me do any voiceovers for these videos? It's because you're always busy. Ah uh, yes, Beverly time. Exactly. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and the belly thing. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori. I'll catch you on the next one. Ta-ra.